the very first story tonight, understand, I have never wanted to cover this subject. No, nay, never. Never wanted to have this particular subject on what the fuck is wrong with you. You just said no, nay, never to an Irish person, and you have to understand, I had to actually physically restrain myself from going. Yes, I know. Like, I had to hold my hands down. Be like, nope. We're not doing that now. There's no beer. Shut up. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not what's happening. But we're trained. I never wanted to cover this. However, today, my inbox explode. Everyone. Uh -oh. so I, I had I, I counted 78 emails about this story. That's one of the most I've ever gotten for a particular story on what the fuck is wrong with you. Oh dear. 78 people immediately jumped up and said, you got to do this shit. You got, and I looked at it and I'm like, yeah, they're right. I got to do this shit. So a bunch of monkeys went to Walmart and no. stuffed down their diapers and then pooped on something. No, no, let, let, let's, let's get the intro going first. And then I will elaborate each week. Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, okay. Tara, are you familiar with Chris Chan? No. Okay. This is a saga. This is not just an internet story, this is a fucking saga. Chris Chan is an individual who loves Sonic. Loves the Hedgehog? Sonic. Yes. Not like the fast food chain? No. Okay. The Hedgehog. Loves fucking Sonic to an insane degree. And uh, he, he also does a webcomic. I loosely use that word. About a totally original character that uh -oh. he created called Sonichu which is a combination of Sonic and Pikachu that is all his. Oh. Totally original. And if it were just this, it would be one thing. But over the course of the past few years, fueled by 4chan and trolls of various assortments, he has gone on a strange, bizarre... Sliding roller coaster of utter madness. There is a wiki devoted to this person. He does not author said wiki. It's done by other people chronicling the madness. Now, the incident we're talking about today, the reason we're getting to it today, is that he was arrested. I'd like to say at long last, but apparently this is the second time. But no, today he was arrested. Well, not today. It was on the 26th. He was arrested and the incident was caught on video. Now, the reason this happened, apparently, is there is a new Sonic game called Sonic Boom. Most of us who played... They just got to that now? Most of us. How long has this been a character, and they just got to that pun now? They uh, well, yeah, I guess the the game is called Sonic Boom. Now, most of us we recognize this is a bad game for many reasons. The camera is awful. The characters never shut up. The gameplay is horrific. It's just a bad game. But no, this is not Chris Chan's problem with Sonic Boom. Chris Chan's problem with Sonic Boom is that they changed Sonic's arm color from white to blue. This has caused a rage among in his, in his mind. Flames, flames on this, that kind of, yeah. Um, to the point Fine. that he went to his local GameStop, according to reports, attempted to deface the Sonic Boom display. Now, he's already been banned from this GameStop. Tell him, Steve Dave. 
Kind of, yes, exactly. He had been banned from the GameStop before, but then, come on, let me, I have to show them the video. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we got video. This happened. And I, I, I'll, let me see if I can give you the actual video link, Tara. Or just quickly type in, go to Google and Google Chris Chan GameStop for you because it's it's slow as dog shit. I'm sorry, I, I put the link on there, but here we go. Here's Chris here. Chan maces a game from stuff and um, yo because they changed the color of and there he goes hits the guy in the yellow shirt with pepper spray. I'll play that one again for you because it's brief, but it happens. What, what you don't hear him saying is don't call anybody is his is what he tells that's, that's his instructions. Here we go. Don't call anybody. There we go. And sprays the guy with pepper spray. And that that's that's what happened. And shortly after this, the police, who were um none too pleased about this. You see, while it may not, I don't understand, and, and uh, other people mess me about this, how it's not, not a big deal anymore because, well, the cops will hit you with the pepper spray and the, and the taser, so what's the big deal? Well, even if you don't really hurt somebody, and the guy at the GameStop was not really hurt, the act of spraying someone with pepper spray is a, it, that's considered an assault. Yeah. You can't that's just do that to people. Um, like, if you have a really good reason, they'll let it slide. But you can't just do that. And why, I, I don't understand the progression of events here. Like, he went in to protest Sonic's arms being blue, yes. which, you know, yeah. fight the power, young man. Yeah. How did that progress to macing an employee in the face? Clear, like, that employee probably didn't have anything to do with the changing of Sonic's arms. No. But he has been banned from this GameStop before this, for this kind of shit. They progressively told him, stop coming here. Don't do this kind of thing. And he, now his, he is out on bail right now. God knows how much that's costing. He was arrested. He was held until today from, from uh, over the weekend. He's out on bail. And his version of accounts... He likens that GameStop employee you just saw, the one who was pretty much just standing there, yeah, to leaping out at him in a darkened alley like a rapist. Does he know he's not a police officer in the South? You can't just, you don't get to say, I feared for my life. No! Don't. Unless you're a cop who kills somebody. It it it's just this really. This is the hill you want to die on. I I honestly don't like. I'm not a video game person. My nephew got a bunch of new video games for Christmas, and he keeps trying to talk me into playing. He got me to play Minecraft for I think like ten minutes before I drowned in lava. Sounds about right, yes. Today we played some kind of fishing game. I didn't catch any fish. He keeps trying to get me to play Disney Infinity, and I'm like, I can't dishonor Captain America that way, because he has the full Avengers set. Um, so I'm not a video game person. Like, I play rock band sometimes. All right, all right. What if Captain America in the video game was red? What would your reaction be? Ah, uh, well, that'd be weirdly communist for Captain America to be wearing. Okay. That's and kind good. of strange. Yeah. Okay. I might, like, tweet about it a couple times. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Would you, in fact, pick up a chemical weapon and go to your nearest game store? Probably not. Probably not. No. No. That's that's not what you do in this situation. That's not what we call a proportionate response. No. Nor is it an effective one. Like, I've worked retail for a long time, and I'm here to tell you, the people working in the store, fuck all to do with the decisions that are pissing you off. 
We're not the people that decided the price of the item, when the store closes, how many we get in stock, uh -uh. what color Sonic the Hedgehog's arms are. Nope. We're, if, and if we were the people making those decisions, we wouldn't be working yep. on Christmas Eve in a store. So coming after the retail people, getting you nowhere. No. Because, and they really, they, why, why just... We are the Morlocks living underground. I grapes. When I was younger, I would get in, I would get so much into a fucking tizzy about shit, inconsequential bullshit pop culture. It would just piss me off to great lengths about that shouldn't be like that and that's stupid. And that, well, the new you know, thing is people are pissed off that Annie's black. Well, that she's supposed to be a redhead, and I'm like, okay, I'm about the biggest redhead elitist you're ever gonna, likely to meet. And they were like, Annie's gonna be black, and I was like, oh, all right. I was apparently, as far as Annie goes, I was told the worst offense is that uh, Cameron Diaz should apologize to Carol Burnett is is the most important. I've thing. heard she's the weakest link. Yeah, yeah. Added, I've heard, I heard they added a couple songs that don't really fit with the whole thing. Those are the two biggest actual problems I heard. But people are really pissed off that Annie's black, and I'm like, why? Yeah, and you it's know, not actually, a plot point in the movie that she's a redhead. It's not like she happens to be. But it doesn't affect anything. Like, there's no reason why Annie can't be black. There's and no I, reason why Daddy Warbucks, or I think his name is Will Stacks now, can't be black. There's and, no reason why Annie can't be white and Will Stacks can't be black. It doesn't matter. And I don't recall anyone going down to their local Carmike Cinema and Mason, the fucking guy with the popcorn. Well, and they are paid enough to deal with this shit. Give it a week or two. The movie just opened. That's, well, no, it's been out on the internet for a while. Thank you, yes. Sony Hackers, but. Um, got more tonight, and oh god. Uh, you know what? Here's the thing. While Chris Chan is such a popular internet topic... Is that his real name? Like, Christian, he didn't change it because of 4chan or something? Christian Weston Chandler. Okay. Because you said Chris Chan, and I was like, is that the new 4chan, 8chan? Are they just naming them now? No, I just... Because they ran out of numbers. Bob Chan. Carl Chan. Yeah. Dave Chan. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you our last story tonight, when we get to it, will kind of make this one seem inconsequential. But she wanted to be a report on it, Internet, and I did. So there you go. All right, I'm going to send this one to you in the IRC channel. We got our well, first... What? Someone just said the original play, Annie, isn't very good in the first place. Oh, no. Whoa. I understand that this, that the original movie is racist as fuck, because it is. I saw Annie on Broadway at age six with Sarah Jessica Parker. I was drunk. It was a transcendental fucking experience, okay? Annie is a classic tale. It's a great story. It's a great play. Aside from the blatant racism, it's a pretty great movie. Albert Finney, you guys, don't fuck with Annie with me. Annie, My Fair Lady. I'm not a big musical theater person, but don't fuck with Annie. Don't fuck with My Fair Lady. Well, our first story tonight is Florida. Of course it's fucking Florida. Um, did you have ever have anyone in your family on an oxygen mask for any reason? Yes, my dad. My dad, too. Hey, you know what? Mine wouldn't stop fucking smoking. And my dad had quit smoking years before, luckily. He would. He was on the goddamn oxygen mask, still lighting fucking cigarettes. That's really dangerous. That is. And my dad just wouldn't use his in public because he found it embarrassing. So, well, you know, at least, at least, I can say my dad was not, while doing it, on crack. That's our. That's our story from Florida. Florida man. Let me bring it up on the screen here. Causes hospital fire. By smoking crack while hooked to oxygen. Do you know what makes me a sad nerd? What? You read the words hospital fire, and I was thinking, does this fill in Loki's blanks in the Avengers? <sighs> they never tell you about Black Widow and the hospital fire. <laughs> no, it's it's not the Black Widow. It's it's She could have done crack. A Florida man is arrested for smoking crack with his hospitalized friend, causing a small fire in an intensive care unit where the patient was located. Lee Vern Cook, 
Oh, bless his heart. 54 was arrested Christmas Eve on multiple charges, including arson, five counts of possession of controlled substance, possession of drug paraphernalia, and possession of a firearm in the commission of a felony. That's the thing. Even if you don't use the gun, if you have a gun while you're committing a felony, they're not happy about that. Cook is accused of... He gets in the hospital. What? How did he get crack and a gun in the hospital? Good question. Cook's accused of visiting a bedridden friend in the North Okaloosa Medical Center Intensive Care Unit, bringing with him crack cocaine, a pipe oh. which to smoke the drug, and a firearm. The so two, he was not patient. No, he brought it to his buddy. The two smoked the cocaine together from a homemade device, police say, but the patient wore an oxygen mask, and the flame from lighting the pipe mixed with the gas to rapidly cause fire. Burn damage was limited to the bed lemons, the patient's gown, and the oxygen mask itself. Patient suffered injuries, transferred to a burn unit, but the hospital was not evacuated. <sighs> if you have a friend in ICU, there's things that you can bring them. They usually say not balloons anymore, especially if they're on oxygen. I sent you cookies. You sent me cookies. Cookies. That sorry, you're infectious. The nurses all got a kick out of that. Yeah, they did. Um, you could send cookies are lovely because there's not a lot of snacks in the hospital. You could send flowers. I got a lot of flowers. I wasn't in ICU. I was on infection, isolation, yeah. whatever. Maybe not crack, because they're already in intensive care. Yeah, nothing says, no, nothing says, crack does not say get well soon. Crack no. says, we're going to make things, crack is not a helpful thing. Crack says, I know I'm in the will. Yes, exactly. Why, why the, the fuck would you? Well, going to see Vern. Uh, let's see. I got my gun, got my crack, got my homemade crack pipe. Interestingly, while I was in the hospital, three separate people tried to send me Pepsi because the cafeteria only had Shasta. <laughs> three separate people tried to send me Pepsi. The gift, the gift store only had Coke. And no one else could find a delivery service for Pepsi. But people tried, and I appreciated that. Well, that, that is like sending you crack, in a way. Kind of. We have uh, more tonight, more misbehavior on airplanes. You missed it last week. We had a uh, fight breakout on a Hong Kong air airliner because uh, babies wouldn't shut up. I did see that story. Well, I watched the replay yeah, after I got to work, so I saw... Three women got into a brawl over this. And it's like a handsome young fella you met on the show. Oh, Petros? He's good people. Mm -hmm. He's good people. Um, now, this is not quite that level, but it does. Do you remember this whole war on Christmas thing that's going on, supposedly? Yeah. Well, we have someone from the other side of the aisle, from the, the, the anti-Christmas warrior, was on a plane. And he had probably the worst reaction to a holiday greeting. Let me send this to you here. Patient tossed over flipping out. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Plane passenger tossed over flipping out over staff's Merry Christmas. I'm trying to center these on the screen a little bit better so people can see them. Um, yeah. Watch out who you wish a Merry Christmas to. It's from the New York Post. Um, bah humbug, the story begins. Because, you know, that's helping the situation. For those of you that are not New Yorkers, expect this story to be slanted because the New York Post is a Republican rag. Well, eh. Still, this would happen. A pastor was tossed off a plane at LaGuardia Airport on Tuesday after flipping out because airline workers wished him a Merry Christmas. The man was waiting. It's monsters. The man was waiting to board American Airlines flight 1140 to Dallas when a cheerful gate agent began welcoming everyone with a Yuletide greeting while checking boarding passages. Grumpy Pastor, who appeared to be traveling alone, barked at the woman, You shouldn't say that because not everyone celebrates Christmas. The agent replied, Well, what should I say then? Don't say Merry Christmas, the man shouted before rushing Pastor. Once on the plane, he was warmly greeted by a flight attendant who wished him a Merry Christmas. That was the last straw. Don't say Merry Christmas, the man raged before lecturing the attendants and the pilot about their faux pas. The crew tried to calm the identified man, but he refused to back down and continued hectoring them. He was escorted off the plane as other flyers burst into cheers. 
Okay. Why did other flyers burst into tears? Cheers. They were oh. applauding. I was like, why were there tears? What? Now, okay. I understand. I am not a person of faith. People say Merry Christmas to me. You know what my response is? Oh, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Or ha- Happy I've Holidays. Had people, I've had people wish me a Happy Hanukkah. Yeah, it's like Happy Hanukkah. Yeah. Obviously not Jewish. Whatever. They did a nice thing. They said a nice thing. Right. Happy Hanukkah to you, too. This is someone is trying to be nice to you. Yeah. They're just it's not that hard to not be a dick, you guys. It's not that hard. I promise you. I work I work in retail. I hate people. And I manage to not be a dick to them for eight hours a day. Is it just me? Is is this just me or is this like Tumblr writ large? You know? Yeah. You shouldn't say Merry Christmas because not everybody celebrates Christmas. It's not sensitive. What, they're taking the fa- what? On Tumblr last week, I saw this whole thing. I think it was actually linked from the Mary Sue, uh-huh. which is usually a pretty good blog, but God, about how N- a Nightmare Before Christmas is a great movie, is, is, um, is actually an allegory for cultural appropriation. And I was like, well, thank God, because there was one thing left in this world that was still okay to be fun. Thank God we nipped that right in the bud by getting offended about it. Also, there are places to be able to have these conversations. Fine. You know where you don't have them? On an airplane? airplane. No. Do you know why? Because they fuck around on airplanes. Yeah. And they pretty much, since we've had so much terrorism and other issues, airplanes are little flying fucking dictatorships. If you piss them off, you're either sitting on the ground, or when the plane lands, you're not going where you thought you were. You're going to a little room. Yeah. And they're going to stuff your stocking. Oh boy, are they going to stuff your it's stocking. Liquefied hummus. They're going to be investigating all your nooks and crannies and just it's not that hard it's not that hard to not be a dick and okay people are telling me that article actually sung the film's praises great i'm just saying i'm not i'm certainly not anti-feminism i like to think i'm a feminist i'm not the world's best feminist but some things have to just be fun yeah like, remember when it was just okay to like things? Not everything has to be offensive. Let it go. Let it go. If someone says Merry Christmas to you and you're not Christian, I'm very sorry. But they were trying to be nice to you. Unless they're one of those people, like, I worked retail and I've said happy holidays to customers and they get really militant and are like, don't you mean Merry Christmas? And I'm like, well, I'm glad to see you're in the spirit. If they come at you like that, by all means, be a dick back, but so, have have you ever been uh, blocked? What's from- the energy to be that pissed off all the time, man? Tumblr. And I do this. Uh, so, have, have you ever been uh, prevented from entering a club before? No. No, you've never been. Well, of course, you've never been stopped. Um, what does that mean? They take one look at you. They're like, "Yep, yeah, let her in." Yeah. But I was with my sister, and we got told that there's a strip of bars on Long Island and we got told that we should go to a particular bar because the other one was a younger crowd. Ouch. Yeah. So we went to the other bar and somebody mistook my sister for my mother. They said, Oh, your daughter has such lovely hair. And my poor sister's like, that's my sister. It's like, I've been telling you to wear a sunblock for 20 years. You don't have <laughs> well, um, it is a frustrating experience to get stopped at the door. However, when you are stopped at the door, you might want to make sure you're actually at the club. Uh, let me send you the story here. Uh, this one is... Come on. Come on, computer. You can do it. You can do it. This comes to us from Maine. Uh, surveillance video of uh, Ma- Maine police say a uh, man was s- intoxicated and smashed through a library door. 
Now what he happened? He really, really didn't want those late fees. He had to get that book back immediately. Well, what happened was that Hemingway book. Man arrested for breaking the glass door at uh, Shepherd Memorial Library in Greenville is a uh, Marine at uh, Camp Lejeune. Uh, Jason, oh, did I get? The, I, th I thought it said Maine. I, th I probably read uh, Marine Police. Sorry, my bad. Um. Jason Brown was arrested overnight Friday after police say he smashed the library's door. Greenville uh, Police Public Information Officer Hunter says Brown was highly intoxicated and thought the library was a club and he was being denied entry, so he smashed through the door. That's a really good advertisement for libraries. <laughs> Did he not notice the lack of lights or music or, or books? Like, is that what the kids are doing now? Because that's <laughs> kind of amazing. Like, have we have we gone so hipster <laughs> that the cool place that you've got to be seen is the library? Because that's kind of awesome. And it's, I love that he I did... had to fight with my nephew to get him to read the directions for a board game he wanted to play today. So I'm in favor of that. Oh, yeah, Ronan from the channel. Oh, yeah! <laughs> it's a library. I mean, librarians know how to party. Just ask Derek. How drunk do you have to be to mistake the library for the club? If you're that drunk, I don't think you're getting into the club anyway. <laughs> to be fair. You're not finding... <laughs> Turn pages for what? Nice. Nice. Um, he took the Reading Rainbow mo motto seriously. What's the Reading Rainbow motto? Take a look. It's in a book. I can do anything. Oh, well, yeah. I can do it. No, you can't. You really can't. Um, let's, yeah. Uh, what else are people saying in the channel? Um, what would he drink? Yeah. Uh, how, how much do you have to drink? What were you drinking? Now, I know sometimes me and my friends, we would drink before we went to the club because the drinks in the club. it's expensive to drink at the club. Yeah. Right. So you drink before you go to the club. But there's a limit. You know, you drink just enough so that when you get to the club, one drink will set you up for the night. That's how you're supposed to do it. Not to be wrecked before you even get in the door. And... What did he think? He was going to bust down the door and then be like, everybody like, hey, welcome. Like, so wrecked that it. you get to the wrong door. Does he live in a neighborhood where a library is right near a club? Because they don't usually put those two things next no, to each other. Those don't go together. I, I've never been, you know, been out at a club and go, you know what I want to do on the way home? I want to return some books. It's right next door. Just drop those in. <laughs> okay. Like, is that what you pregame now? Uh -huh. So our next one is uh, we've we've long maintained that guns are not remote controls for life. Oh God! Yeah, and we, we have it again. Now there are many reasons. I will grant. I don't not a big fan of guns, but there are reasons to pull a gun in the world. This it, this is not one. This is a story. Man pulls gun after wrong McDonald's order. We've done this before. No, they've done it before. We're having to do it again. Like, look, I eat more, more McDonald's than any person my age should. Because it's the only easy takeout on the main drag here. And I eat in the car a lot. Also a bad habit. I've never gotten so... Like, they've gotten my order wrong before. Like, I yeah. like my... No pickles. I've gotten that fucking burger with pickles on it before. And when you're on the highway, it's really hard to spit out that pickle, especially graceful, because people can see you. I've never gotten so mad that I thought I need to kill them. Nashville, Tennessee man became so upset about a missing McDouble cheeseburger from his drive through that he returned to the restaurant with a pistol. Um, also, the McDouble is bullshit. <laughs> It's the same exact burger, missing a slice of cheese, and they charge like 60 cents less. North Precinct detectives are looking for a 21-year-old Dimitri Johnson in connection to the Thursday aggravated assault at the restaurant. Um, police say Johnson placed a drive-thru order early Thursday, received his food, and pulled away. 
He drove back through the drive-thru, complained about the missing cheeseburger, and their manager asked him to park and said he would bring out the missing sandwich. Fine. I love this next item and this next line in the story. Why is this here? This is some padding here. The cheeseburger is not part of the eight items McDonald's cutting from his menu in select testing locations. Well, thank you for that thorough. Where the fuck did that come from? That came from the editor going, you need like 50 more words. Johnson is accused of walking into the restaurant a few minutes later with a pistol, racking it, I assume they mean co or cocking it, and demanding that the staff fix the order. He and the three women with him also wanted fresh fries and new soft drinks. They left after receiving their food. Here's the thing. If you go in without the gun, they're still going to fix your order. Exactly! If you went without the gun and are like, hey, I'm short of McDouble and my fries are cold, they're going to give you McDouble and new fries. They're, right. they're, like, they're going to do that even without the threat of violence. Right, it's like, here's my receipt. If you don't fix this, I'll call corporate. They'll fix that shit. And the funny part is that way you don't go to jail. Right! You don't go to jail over a fucking cheeseburger! A really bad cheeseburger. Right! A really salty cheeseburger. When they catch him, he's going to be in jail and be like, what are you here for? Cheeseburger. And you know what? The cheeseburgers in prison, I've heard they're not very good either. No. No, and you really don't want to try the tossed salad. I wasn't going to go there. Mm -mm. You think McDonald's salads are bad? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. And just try complaining about the food in prison. See how that does for you. Guns are not your remote control. It's not how you stop, pause, fast forward. It's not a remote control for life. It's not how you get... Because when you pull out a gun, that's when all the rules stop and you're in trouble. You have broken the social contract. This is not like Conan and Barbarian shit, okay? You have taken Mjolnir to the social contract. Yes. This is not how they do that. Unless you're in the South, which, as I understand it, in the South, pretty much all negotiations are done at gunpoint. <laughs> Especially in Texas. Sadly, no. At least not where I live. Although that was an option, it was just not one that was taken very often. But still. What, what is... What, seriously, what did people think... What, what was his end game? I'll get the cheeseburger, and then I'm fine. What and are they going to do? Consequences will be visited upon me. No. Uh... No. Oh, okay. Now, I warned you. I warned you all, the last story this week is the most atrocious shit. Wow, I probably should have phrased that better. Um, if you're in retail, you are going to be angry. If you're everyone okay. else, you're going to be appalled. And if you're eating, stop. Oh, God. I'm giving you a minute. Finish your bite. Okay, chew. Chew. Don't, I don't want have you my comfort kitty. We, we don't want you to choke, so chew. Chew thoroughly. You swallow it. All right, take a sip. You got it down? You good? All right. Okay, let's let's go here. So, um... I have no segue. I'll send you the link. Let everybody else digest the headline as they can see it right now. I don't think you want them digesting anything, as far as like you've told me. That that is a good point. Let me give you the headline. Dan would like you to know that he's eating. Well, you should probably stop. Um, Marisol Toribio, Toribio, Marisol Toribio smears poop in employees' faces. Macy shoplifting suspect arrested in Coral Springs, Fort Lauderdale. Florida. A shoplifting suspect, apparently out of options after being confronted by employees, smeared poop in their faces. Marisol Toribio, 32, was arrested Tuesday. According to court documents, Toribio was caught stealing from Macy's. I can't even read the next line. Oh my god. So she pulled some poop out of her pants... Which, why was that there? And smeared it in the faces of the loss prevention employees who confronted her 
Taribi appeared in bond court Wednesday morning. She faces theft charges plus charge of tampering with or fabricating physical evidence. That's it? What? Where's the poop charge? There, there needs to, there should be a poop charge. Why is there no poop charge? Where is the poop? Ch okay. First of all. Oh God. I Being Jim Slade. We stop. Talk about shit faced. Why was there ready to go poop in her pants? If you're old enough to shoplift, you should be potty trained. You know, they tell people not to go after... Were you told not to go after shoplifters when you worked in retail? Yeah. Yeah, they tell you, don't go after them. Leave that to security and the police. You just report it, and you're right. done. Or you have what's called a recovery statement, <clears throat> where... Pretty much most of the places I worked, you were supposed to walk up to them, ask them if they needed help, acknowledge the item you saw them conceal. So, like, for instance, when I worked at Old Navy, if you saw them shove a T-shirt in their bag, you would say, hey, can I show you a pair of jeans to go with that T-shirt? To let them know you know they have something. Hmm. But what this is supposed to do is sort of frighten them into putting the item back and leaving. Yes. In this case... A lot of the time, people do get aggressive with you and be like, what t-shirt? Because they know you can't really say you're stealing from me. But sometimes it does work. And sometimes it's just a w w way to stall long enough to get security there. Except in this case. Yeah. Would you like some jeans to go with that t-shirt? Ah! Why was there poop in her pants? Why was she pooping in her pants? It was, why did... It's just like she had a shit ready to... She literally had that shit ready to go. I can't why, shit on command. Why did she think this would not compound the error? I know. This is not going to make it any better. This is, no. this is just making things worse. Because now, technically, you've assaulted somebody. Although there's no poop charge on there. We need a poop charge. And someone said, actually, that employees can't arrest you. Macy's doesn't fuck around. Oh, well. Yeah. Macy's keeps cops in the store. And they're loss prevention people. Like, I've seen some shit go down in a Macy's. That <laughs> Macy's is a big company. <laughs> Sorry. Macy's doesn't fuck around. Like, Macy's is a very big company. And they give no fucks. So... In this case, the shit came up. They didn't go down. It came up. Like, don't... Don't pull this stuff in a Macy's, because you will. They have a locked cell, Macy's. They And some the really big ones have multiple cells, like in the basement or in the loss prevention area. They have little baby jail cells where they can put you while they wait for the cops. Just of all the reactions to that, not run, not, you know, any of not try and talk your way out of it. Just go straight for the poop. My ex-husband got offered sexual favors when he caught shoplifters at his old retail job. Still better than smearing poop on people. Still better than smearing poop. Yeah. Yeah. Catch more flies with honey. Shit. Than with poop. D. Scott. No shits get... Oh, wait. Never mind. Yeah. When they say give a shit, this is not what they mean. Mm-mm. I, can you poop on... I can't poop on command. I don't know anybody who can just go, okay, poop time. I can't do that. Mm -mm. To just be able to go, okay, as a natural... This is like some kind of Discovery Channel, sh you know, natural defense. <laughs> when confronted Actually, in the Macy's. You know, hippos do that as a sign of aggression. They poop as, as a, a sign of aggression. They poop? And then they whip their tan around, tan, tail around like a fan and, and whip the poop all over. And that's like, if a hippo starts to do that, you are supposed to know to run because you are in their territory and that is a sign of aggression. So hippos have a literal shitstorm ability. Yes. It's a shitstorm. Yes. And that's how you know you're fucked. Here we see the Macy shoplifter. When confronted, the shoplifter 
we literally poop on herself and use it to smear in the faces of her attackers, blinding them so she may escape. It's like David Attenborough weird. Just And yet, as much as as much as I'm a fan of the noble and majestic hippo, I don't think I would use that as a defense myself. No. Cause there's that 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 is that is the nuclear option. Because there's no going back for that. Forever and always, when someone Googles your name, if you attempt to find a job, if you go on Facebook, anytime someone Googles your name, the first thing popping up is poop smear. That the, the internet is forever. That I guess that's the first thing we learned this week. You're you're gonna get some dudes on dating sites with some pretty specific fetishes. <laughs> the first thing we learned is poop is the nuclear option. Yeah. Is that the upgrade from poop is not a plan? Poop is not poop is the nuclear option. It's not a plan. It's mutually assured destruction. Yeah. Well, actually, no, it's just whoever, who, he who flung it, done it. I, I, I have nothing witty there. It's just, it's awful. I don't know. I think, I know, I think in the age of infectious disease, it's mutually assured destruction. Just, that is. It's considered a biohazard. Like, in retail, yeah. if there's any kind of bodily fluid, vomit, shit, whatever on the floor, you have to get a special biohazard kit to clean it up. Like, you can't just mop it. Take the shit too far. <laughs> I can't, every other word I say is shit. So it's like, you take shit too far. Yes, exactly. Um, we've learned guns are not remote controls for life. No. We've learned that... McDonald's it, is not that serious. It's not. Especially the fucking dollar menu, bro. If the club seems unusually quiet, <laughs> maybe you should call. Just, just throwing that out there. Um, we've learned that planes are mini dictatorships and they will not be fucked with so don't fuck around on them we've learned that there are many nice things to bring your friends in the hospital cocaine is not one of them no and finally we've learned this week that apparently changing the arms color of a video game character Serious business. Serious business. And also, retail people have no power. Leave them alone. Their lives are hard enough already. Yes! Stop fucking with them. They don't make the decisions, man. If they did, their lives would be a lot less miserable. They wouldn't be dealing with you. Mm -mm. 